This week's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hello, my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. We're here in Colliehurst, the Irk Valley, the Mossbrook and Colliehurst Road. That's the Irk Valley behind me there and Colliehurst Road is just where those cars are parked. Now I've done some videos here before, a few years ago I did a few videos around Colliehurst Road and the Irk Valley and it's the place that just keeps on giving because we're looking at more history in this area. Down there, the Mossbrook meets the River Irk at some point and that's the issue in this video we're also interested in this area here this was uh, an area steeped in history and i found some rather interesting information and also i've got a bit of a mystery about the moss brook i want to look into okay so here we are we're in manchester as you can see and we'll zoom in on the area that we're interested in uh, where are we there we are collyhurst okay collyhurst and as we zoom in, you can see the River Irk there. I've got a nice big cursor for you, by the way, so you can uh, I can point things out. And there's Collyhurst Road, and the bit we're interested in is here. <clears throat> see the Moss Brook? There's the Moss Brook. And we've had quite a few adventures on the Moss Brook. And you'll see that, logically, you would think, well, there it is, it's running down, this is a valley, it runs down here, and it would probably meet the River Irk here. All right, well, it doesn't. I'm going to switch to satellite view for a moment. Um, there we go, satellite view. And as we zoom in there, this is the area again. Okay, Mossbrook coming down here, goes underneath the railway viaduct, and it should join the River Irk. There, there's the Irk. There's the River Irk. But the Mossbrook doesn't. <clears throat> so what does it do? And this is what started to intrigue us. Now, obviously something goes on here. I know for a fact it goes underneath the road here. I can show you that. But obviously it takes a swing, right? And it does do because the moss brook then doesn't actually come out into the river Irk until here, this point here. I'm going to zoom in on that. There's the Moss Brook coming out there. Now what happens, this is what me and Danny were asking, what happens between there and there, right? And we had to go and investigate and we had to also start looking at some older maps to try and figure out because we, we decided that the Moss Brook must have at some point in the past joined the River Irk there. It's logical. This is its natural route. It's got to have joined there. Like I say, it joins there. And we're interested in this area because it used to have some old mills here. So let's just flick back to where was I doing the intro to this video. I was doing it around about here, I think is where I did the, the intro. Let's flick back to there now, around about there. Right, so there you go. We need to get into the Moss Brook, but unfortunately, it's in a bit of a valley just behind me there. It's a bit overgrown. So let's cut back a couple of months ago when we came here to do the initial investigations for this video. Just follow them trees down, it'll be easy. Okay, so off we go down this bloody steep bank and we had our, with me and Danny, we had our mate Roy with us who had the presence of mind to start filming on his, the GoPro and his helmet straight away. So I thought I'd show you this just as we move by stealth down the bank because we didn't want to draw attention to ourselves. Shit. 
Okay, so while we're talking about going in by stealth under the radar and being unnoticed and protected, let's take a moment to talk about this week's sponsor, which is Surfshark. Surfshark is a virtual private network. So what does that mean to me and you? Well, basically it, it encrypts the data that goes from your computer up to the internet. It protects your identity, your online identity. So how does that work for me and you? Well, I'm sure you've been equally horrified and surprised when you've been online, surfing for something, looking at deals, cameras, camping gear, something like that. You go to a completely different website and what are the advertisements? Cameras and camping gear, just what you've been looking at. Quite freaky to be honest with you. It stops big corporations and other people tracking your online activities. How else does it work? Well, it's got some real benefits because what it can do is it can change the location of your device. Obviously, only the virtual location. So let's say, for example, you're a user of Netflix like I am. Netflix UK, there's some good stuff on there, but there's even different stuff on Netflix US. By using Surfshark, you can change your virtual location. Suddenly, Netflix thinks you're in the US and it opens up a whole new world of stuff that you can't get on the UK version of Netflix. Okay, so Surfshark works across multiple devices, so you can have it on your, on your laptop, on your iPad, on your phone, whatever you're using. Use my code ZERO to get 83% off Surfshark plus three months extra for free. I'll put the link in the description to this video, and I'll also pin it in the first comment. So give Surfshark a try and get all the extra protection and advantages that it gives you. I bet we, we sort of need to head to that clear and then follow the river around. We can climb down near the viaduct then. Face of concentration. Slid down that last bit. Yeah, go down to the back of this building and keep quiet because you can get down yeah. there normally. Yeah, because there's like a step bit if I remember right. Right, so just as Danny gets into the brook there, we need to cut back to a map because I need to give you some more background information. Now, just one, just one other thing I want to draw your attention to. You see where it says River Irk here? You'll see the Irk comes down here, runs through the Marcel Guest Paintworks, and it comes to here, and it takes a sharp bend here, right here, and there's a weir there. Now we can't see that weir because obviously you can walk down Collier's Road but the weir is hidden within the grounds of the works. So it's a bit annoying really because we believe obviously this weir was built to build a head of water here. So what's going on in this area and what's going on here? Um, so we might have to contact the good people at H. Marcel Guest. 
Right, so this is Green's map of 1787 to 1794. Now, it's difficult to find maps that stretch this far out of Manchester city centre. As you can imagine, a lot of the maps um, usually don't um, don't cover the, the colliest area. They, they tend to cover city centre. Here's our area of interest. Right, <clears throat> there's the Moss Brook. That is the Moss Brook running down there. And you can see now this map, believe it or not, illustrates what happens to it, probably because it's a very old map. The Moss Brook comes down here. Look at that. We'll come back to that. Comes down here. There's Collius Road, and it's not got a name at the moment. It's called To Blakely. That's the next village along. And it swings round there. And it goes down there. And it takes a turn. And it comes out where I pointed out before. Um, on, on when, I, when I pointed out on Google Maps, it's coming out there. Look at that. And we've got here Collierhurst Mills. Remember, this is 1787. And it's interesting to see this land all around here that's now so built up. This, this here is all railway land. The railway took over this. But it's just called the Earl of Derby. I take it that's who owns it. Absolutely fascinating. Um, so, yep, yeah, Mossbrook. And this time it shows it swinging to the left. Now, there's the weir on the... Uh, let's, I, can't get, I can't turn my cursor into a pointer, but where my little hand is, there's the weir on the, uh, on the River Irk. Remember that? <clears throat> now, clearly, they want to feed something in these mills. So they're utilising the moss brook, in, right, to bring the water this way to feed possibly a wheel here. And the Irk is also feeding something as well. So they brought the full force of the Irk in that way. So it hits this way so it can drive a wheel. And obviously there's a weir there just to create a head of water. So you've got a source to power a wheel. So you've got the Moss Brook there powering a wheel probably. And you've got the Irk powering a wheel. They then both come down here, join up. And then they take the root of the Moss Brook and join the Irk again there. I hope all that makes sense, but that's what we looked at and that's what we were fascinated with. So we're saying, if we could get down there, does this bit still exist? We know the Moss Brook, or we seriously think the Moss Brook still goes along this route. What is this route like? And what is this, is this tail race here? Because the Irk is turning something, is powering in here underneath this building and probably turning a wheel. Does this bit still exist here? This little route here. Fascinating. So we are going down here with intrepidation. We're seriously hoping to find something. Now the other thing I want to point out to you. See the little bridge there across the Mossbrook and the Irk. Look at that bridge. There's a walkway there from Collyhurst Road where it says to Blakely. Across the Mossbrook uh, and across, well, across this tail race here. And into this area that where it says Collyhurst Mills. So, remember this layout. And remember that little bridge. And I want you to clock this here. Look at that feed there. Now, is that a feed or is that something running into the Moss Brook? But I want you to clock that. So, let's clock that. Let's clock the bridge. And let's clock this, where, what the Irk does here. Right? But this was a long, long time ago. And this is what started to intrigue us. We were saying, what's this? And why does the Mossbrook do this? Well, obviously, it's to do with the Collier's Mills. Right, so we're in the Mossbrook. The brook that just keeps on giving. We're heading that way, underneath Collier's Road. It was a bit of a bugger to get in this brook, to be honest with you, because as you can see, it's a bit of a ravine to get in. So it was difficult to get in. I've got my GoPro set up on my head. I know it looks completely ridiculous, I need to sort something out to be honest with you because uh, that is too high but uh, I'll try and think of another configuration but for now it'll do. Okay so remember the map from the 1700s I've just shown you. Remember what we thought was either a feed or not, or, or it was an offshoot, it was either a feed or it was something draining into the brook. Well, we're about to strike gold. Danny spots it straight away, take a look at this. I'll do some narration from there because no one can see so what did he spot? Yes, it's that feed. Look at it. There it is. I think I counted four, five, six, seven brick, seven bricks thick arch. Um, 
look at that. Now, we looked inside it and it was all backfilled. But that's it. That was on the 1700s map. And that's the thing that either feeds into the brook or f- takes a feed off it. Now, it's th- there's, a, there's a weir, a little weir just downstream, a little mini weir. That thing there is a red herring. I'm not sure that that's concrete. And it's in the wrong place to form any function. But look at that. Like I say, backfilled. And just downstream is a kind of a weir. A uh, very old weir. But we found it. F- bingo, straight away. Now, it is a little bit confusing. Because in front of us there is what looks like a weir. A very sort of like shallow weir. It's got cobblestones in it. See that? And that's in the right position to build a head of water for the arch I've just shown you. The thing there now I'm zooming in on, hmm, not sure what that is because that's in the wrong position to create a weir. Is it an old crossing or is it just a piece of concrete? Very difficult to tell. Okay, so we're heading down there under that bridge. Got my gas meter on. Not because I think there's much gas in there, but it's when you're disturbing the mud, you've got to be careful. You, you know, there's gas is possibly trapped in the mud. So we'll head that way. We've already seen one clue from the past, a little arch. So we'll head in, see what else we can see. And these stones, you know, either side of the moss brook, as you look at them, um, so old, so old. I mean, it's difficult to put a, a date on them, but they're the uh, probably the foundation stones for some building that was there. Um, hundreds of years old i mean you know you see all these new developments in manchester these things are absolutely ancient as far as i'm concerned okay so we're about to head underneath collier's road into the darkness and you would have thought that the moss brook should carry onwards through there to the river Irk and probably at one time did but it's taking a sharp bend left as we suspected. Watch it then, it's a bit slippy. It's Unfortunately, that is a sewer overflow that feeds directly into the moss brook. We don't go up there because it's a bit stinky. Stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a bit I'm going to go to that side. Yeah. Okay, we're in. Uh, fortunately, the brook is uh, quite gentle at the minute. The floor's a bit slippy. Stinks a bit down there. We've got the gas meter with us. Um, so we'll head onwards and see where, where this goes. What, obviously, what we're hoping to find is the two tail races from what we think were water wheels. Um, whether we'll find that or not, we don't know. But we're, we, you can live in hope, can't you? So we'll crack on and we'll head on into the darkness now i was ever the, op- the optimist on this uh, this mission uh, it would be lovely to get round the corner and see the tail race from the irk that drove a wheel joining us or something to say it was there because it was there but whether we'll find any old workings or not maybe 
Maybe not. I don't think we will do. But let's just see what it's like in here anyway and follow this route and see where the moss brook comes out into the Irk. If there's one clue of that other tail race from the Irk, I'll be chuffed to mint balls. So we've got an old pipe there. And you'll see we're going from brick now into stone. So this is really old. This, whether this has been done in sections or not, we don't know. We're going into stone now. So evidence that this is really an older section. See how it's botted up there. So at this point, the, the smell's sort of gone. We can feel a solid floor underneath us because I think it's a brick, a brick floor. Um, and there's, there is some mud on it, um, but the going's good. We're not too deep and the smell's gone. Uh, so good progress so far, but we've yet to come to our area of interest. All the toilet things. <laughs> Okay, so this is Joseph Adshead's map. Can't say it. Uh, 1800 to 1861, and this is this is very interesting. All right, so we'll zoom in on this. Uh, again, a bit of a gem because it's hard to find maps uh, out in this part of uh, Manchester. Right, just just as a matter of interest, a lot of people said to me, "There's hundreds and hundreds of bricks in your videos, Martin. You know where do they all come from? Well, if you look at that, that's just in Colliers. You've got brick field there." And quite often when I'm looking at these old maps, I come across many, many, many of these brick fields. So Collier Sandstone Quarry, uh, just as a matter of interest, uh, that's where a lot of the uh, stone for Manchester Cathedral and St Anne's Church come from in Manchester. They come from that sandstone delf, all on Collier's Road. Uh, right, so here's our area again, and I'm going to try and zoom in. Let's just zoom in, if I can do this right. Okay, so on this map, the weir is marked, but the offshoot's gone. So there's the weir on the Moss Brook, remember at the beginning of the video. The offshoot's gone. Um, and it comes around here, as we've established already. Runs open for a short time, and then goes underground. All right? And then here we have our layout. Here we have it. It runs along here, obviously hits something, maybe a wheel, and then runs to this point here. Here's the tail races. There's the irk. There's the weir on the irk that we find have difficulty looking at because it's within now the H. Marcel guessworks. But there's the weir, and the, surely something comes along here and feeds probably a wheel as well underneath this mill. They both join together and they come out at the point I've pointed out to you there. On the, back on the River Irk. Now, if you look at this, Logwood Mill, John Appleton. Logwood Mill, John Appleton. Right, very interesting. So, we've got some greenery here now. So we've got some mills, we've now got greenery, and we've got this arrangement here. I wonder what this was like when this ran open, because it certainly doesn't run open anymore. As we know, it's now the H. Marcel Guest Paintworks. So it's clearly been utilised at the Logwood Mills here to drive uh, wheels. Right, so there you go. That's our layout. So we finally got an inkling into what was there before HMG, H. Marcel Guest Paints, the Logwood Mills. Also, just clock the bridge there in the middle of that greenery. Hmm, we've, uh, we've seen that before on the other map, haven't we, the bridge? Right, so Logwood Mills, that, but, uh, and it also says John Appleton. That's an insight into what was there before. And what happens here? Does this still exist? We know the Moss Brook is doing this. We know the Moss Brook is coming down here and has to follow this route somewhere and come out here because it still does come out here. But does this still exist? And this is what we wanted to know. And this is why we are come all the way down to get into the Moss Brook here to take a look at what's going on. But there you go. Logwood Mills, owned by John Appleton. 
and then this green area here in front. So what were the logwood mills like? Can we ever see any, any pictures of them? And what became of this green area? Okay, so I'll leave you with that for the moment. That's that lag there. Okay, remember the bridge that I pointed out to you on the map? Well, here it is. Yeah, kind of it. So we've got uh, another section here. So it looks like it was done in sections, doesn't it? So you've got that there, and a, a slightly newer section. I wonder if this was a bridge at one point. Possibly, are. I think this bit was open at one point, yeah. Yeah. And it's been covered, so you can see the original stone curbing. Yeah, so we think this was a bridge. You can see here. It's possibly a bridge. And, uh, and then all that would just come through was culverted later. Yeah, same with this. Fascinating to see the bridge, absolutely wonderful. Uh, that has got to be one of them bridges on them on them maps. It's got to be, hasn't it? It, it, it? You can just tell by the width of it. Anyway, just to take a break from the murky depths of the Moss Brook for the moment. One of the things about Collyhurst Road that's always fascinated me is how it's changed over the years. If we're to drive down today, mm, you don't see a great deal. The river irks on on the uh, the side. But there's not a lot to see. Well, my God, has it changed from what it was just in the 60s. Well, we have a bit of a feature in the ceiling here. And it always gets me out why they put these things in. Why is it? Well, it's not, it's, it's not even a proper lid. You could just lift that with your finger. Yeah, that's up in the yard. That. That's in the paint factory. Yeah. yeah. Focus from the HMG. Yeah. Seems to open up a bit now. Okay, so this area here, I think this is where the leet from the Irk joined. Um, obviously the Irk had a weir, that was uh, to drive a wheel, and this is where it joined. And you can see now as we open up, we're just in concrete. Uh, so it's all been taken away. So we came down here, but unfortunately we've not found what we were looking for. Possibly a new bit. Just with the factory up above, uh, and I wonder if that is that brick or concrete along there. Um, yeah, this might have been where the tail rake is joined, um, and this has all been replaced when the factory above has been done. See the old uh, culvert there? They've probably cut into it there, or maybe that was a bridge. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see the layout here, I think this was where the tail race from the River Irk joined the Moss Brook. I refer you back to the maps that I showed you earlier on, the two tail races. Clearly this is the point, and what we're looking for is gone, it's not there, but I have got a picture to show you. I don't think this has ever been seen before. This is from the very kind people at H. Marcel Guest. They've sent us this picture. You can see our culvert, and there it's being... Redone. Basically, they built a, there was a factory built or a warehouse built over the top of the, the, the culvert. So we lost the tail race from the River Irk. And you can see this is an above view of what we've just been look, looking at from below. I've not got a date on this. I'm thinking it was late 50s, early 60s. Uh, but thanks to the people from the paintworks because you've cleared something up. 
Um, we lost the tail race from the River Irk. But it solved that mystery. Um, so I have got more pictures to show you that the people at the uh, Paintwork sent us. H. Marcel Guest. Uh, fascinating insight. Let's crack on with the video. Okay, we are now heading towards the River Irk. That's in front of us. It's getting muddy on the foot and the mud's getting quite deeper. Um, but obviously this is silt that the Irk has probably deposited in this entrance area. But because there's quite a bit of mud here, we're kicking it all up. And what we're kicking up now is a bit of sewage from the sewer overflow way back there. So it's starting to stink again. So the, 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 the mud that the Irk's deposited has got a bit of that sewage in, in it. Uh, I'll show you in a bit what we're kicking up. But uh, yeah, the smell had gone. And now it's back. Oh, shallow one. Maybe it is. Look what we're stirring up there. So we're here. We're just at the uh, the mouth where the, uh, the moss book out falls into the river Irk there. Right, clock that. See that? just at the outfall of the Moss Brook. And look at the Irk here, look how it is, because I'm going to show you a picture in a minute. Uh, on the right there, you see the remains of a factory, windows there, and as we turn around, you can see the actual outfall here. There's the Moss Brook coming out into the River Irk. Um, and I'll just zoom in, there you go, there's uh, the remains of, uh, of uh, I think that's a little, little green works. Uh, we'll go back to the maps in a moment. But you've clocked all that, you've clocked that weird thing in the river, and you've clocked how the river looks, right? Take a look at this. Okay, so that is taken in the river where we are now, in 1925. You'll see on the left there, see where it says A, you'll have to sharpen your eyes, it says A to the left of the picture underneath the ladder. That is that little thing I showed you. You see the ladder, that's where the photographers got in, got into the river. The river at this point would have been absolutely filthy, black, polluted, horrible. And of course there's the Moss Brook meeting the River Irk where we've just come out of. You can still see the, the photographer's ladder there. And behind, uh, upstream, if you look along the river, you'll see possibly the Logwood Mills. Uh, that's the only glimpse we get of them, unfortunately. Now, you look to the right there, you'll see a street. Let's try and find out what that street was. But another picture here to show you what the Logwood Mills may have looked, looked like. This is just further downstream, and so we're not quite seeing the little green area, the, the area that is now H. Marcel Guest, but... You'll see the buildings, that's how they were. The two chimneys have now long since gone. But that street, what was that street all about? And what became of the area now? Let's look at a later map of the area. All right, here we go. So here, this is the side-by-side -side maps courtesy of, National, courtesy of National Libraries of Scotland. All right. Now you can look on either side, it's up to you, but the cursors will um, be in sync if you look at that. I'm gonna. I'm more interested in the left-hand side. There's the Moss Brook. This is our area here. All right. We. I did my intro about. Uh, where did I do it? About here. We had to go down this escarpment here, uh, down to the Moss Brook. Now, amazingly, there was a, a machine works there. That's long since gone. Uh, all that's there now is a wall. I think you may have seen that. We. Went underneath the viaduct here and we came along here and we know that the Moss Brook now takes a sharp turn this way. Oh, this map, by the way, is 1888 to 1913. So again, much later now. But anyway, there's the Moss Brook. Moss Brook comes down, down the valley, takes a sharp turn here and we know it's running under these mills here, the former Logwood Mills, and it comes out here, as we know. Again, I'm looking at the left-hand map here. So the only reason I brought this up for you is because Again, there's the weir, there's our mills, the Logwood Mills. But look at that now, where it was green before on the previous map, we've got some streets. We've got Appleton Street that run right up to the Irk, and we've got Bebbington Street that run right up to the Irk. We've also got Bratt Street as well. I want you to remember Bebbington Street. <laughs> 
you probably know why. Uh, but remember, remember Bebbington Street, all right? But that's the area much later. Absolutely fascinating. And this area now over the other side of the river is called Little Green Works. Uh, what's it say? Packaging materials, all right? So, and there's our mills, the Logwood Mills there. And we've also got Little Green Dye Works. Obviously, all of this now is all this area and this area here is H. Marcel Guest Paints. And you can see now the railway has appeared um, up to the left-hand side. Right, I just thought I'd bring that in as interest because that's a, a later map. But I'm fascinated with Appleton Street and Bebbington Street and the, all the streets that are here. Uh, and the Grapes Inn, all gone. Now, of course, Appleton Street is named after John Appleton, who uh, owns the Logwood Mills. So he gets a street named after him. But Bebbington Street, can we see Bebbington Street? Yes, we can. There it is, Bebbington Street. Looks like it's just about to be pulled down. These pictures were taken in 1896. Um, the bottom end of it near the river is in absolute state, a uh, terrible state of repair. Um, I'll show you a series of pictures now of Bebbington Street. We'll finish with the corner shop. And curiously, it looks like they, they may have just de demolished the back end of Bebbington Street. Not quite sure. I often look at these pictures and I think 1896, if you were born there just a year before, maybe when Bebbington Street was still okay, you would have been one of the kids that were sent off to fight in the First World War. So I look at that and I look, think of the residents there and I think how many went off to fight and how many never came home. This is from a timeline of Collyhurst that I found. 1763, Calico Printer, first of its kind at the Little Green Works in Collyhurst. That's our factories, that's our Logwood Mills. Workers offer, often operated drunk and presented mistakes. Now, you don't hear that, do you? Um, but maybe they did. They, you know, drinking was a big thing back then. People just drank all day long because of the lack of uh, fresh water. Now, 1763, I think that's the start of our story. When we look at, looked at those early maps and we saw the way the, uh, the Moss Brook had been originally um, diverted, I think it was all done for those early works, those calico printers. Um, and I think that's, like I said, I think that's where our story begins. And then it runs on from there. Here's another entry from the Collierst timeline. Okay, so amongst other factories, you'll see there... Second along, Logwood Mill worked by John Appleton, 1839 on that. Now, I think that's probably when the, it changed from the calico printers into what the Logwood, Logwood Mills became. They were a fulling mill, so it changed its use. But 1839 we've got on the uh, Logwood Mills. Now, possibly that's when the buildings were built, because imagine... The one in the 1763 buildings were possibly earlier. I don't think uh, in those old pictures what we saw dated back to the 1700s. I'm speculating here. But we have a date of 1839 finally. Um, so that helps to complete the story somewhat. Now earlier I did ask, can we ever see the Logwood Mills? Because they've long since gone. Here they are in the background there. Our friends at uh, H. Marcel Guest Paint sent us more pictures. There's the culvert, having something done to it. Now, I, look, this is possibly earlier work than the picture I showed you before. But in the background, that is the Logwood Mills, 1839. I think the date is on that. Um, I'm going to show you another picture now, an even better picture. There you go the Logwood Mills. Now, um, I don't think you'll see that picture anywhere else, to be honest with you. Um, again, that was provided by the people at the Paintworks, H. Marcel Guest, that have uh, that know the history of their site and have kept records. 
and they very kindly provided that photograph. Um, again, I think 1839, that building. Now, the, the feeds that we've been looking at from the Mossbrook and the Irk clearly probably weren't for that because in 1839, if that's when that was built, this would have been reliant on steam, probably had boilers to power it. Uh, so the two feeds were either just freshwater feeds for the calico printers um, or they, they did power wheels, but I don't think that they were, whether they were made use of for that mill there, I don't know. They could have fed water again for certain processes. It was a fulling mill, um, so they probably still did need the water. But again, that, that's a later mill, but again, long since gone, long since gone. But I do thank the people at H. Marcel Guest for providing that photograph because it's a brilliant brilliant insight um, quite different from the mills that you see around today quite a different design the windows on it and everything and the the design of it to the right is quite different from the the, the left hand part of the building uh, whether there's two dates on that whether it was uh, extended at some point um, looks like it's about to be demolished but anyway, John Appleton's Logwood Mills, there it is. And But what became of, of the mills and John Appleton? Uh, let's take a look at this entry that I found here. Okay, take a look at this. This is from Grace's Guide, and it's clearly a notice from a newspaper, um, 1853. The trustees of John Appleton, who's now deceased, have got together and they're auctioning off the gear, basically. They're auctioning off the family goods. Um, lot one. And here we go, all those ancient and well-accustomed Logwood Mills known by the name of Collius Logwood Mills, with the weir, dam, tunnels, goit, waterfall of the River Irk, three water wheels, sheds, outbuildings, and appurtenances thereunto belonging to blah, 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 blah. And it goes on and they're auctioning off all the machinery. But there's the line that we wanted to hear, right? So we've got um, the weir, the dam, <laughs> the tunnels of the River Irk, and the water wheels, the goits and the water wheels. So there was water wheels there. So in conclusion, those goits, those those tail races and goits did feed water wheels, one off the uh, Moss Brook, one off the uh, River Irk. That's why the uh, the weir was probably built on the on the Irk. The mysterious one that we looked at first off, the little arch, we don't know what that's about. But the Mossbrook fed a wheel down at Logwood Mills and so did the River Irk. Fant fantastic, fantastic. And that, that little entry, that, that um, entry about the, the, uh, the auction says it all. There was a water wheel. Unfortunately, as we showed, alterations to the, um, to the, uh, the culvert meant that we can't see the leak from the River Irk and the water wheels are probably long since gone. So there you go. I mean, I mean, we just investigated one tiny area of Manchester there. But there's one final question, and that was the way on the River Irk, the one that we can't see, that's still there, that nobody can see. Do we get to see this in this video? Well, yes, we do, because we were invited on site, a H. Marcel guest. And here is the, the, the weir on the Irk that, that unless you work at the paint factory, no one gets to see. Take a look at this. Now, I don't doubt, just bit at that head of water behind the weir, there would have been a feed there, and I bet it's still there for one of the wheels that we uh, we knew existed in this area. And then just when you think you've worked everything out, something else crops up. Was interesting no sign of any tail races we hoped to see a water wheel but it weren't going to happen was it unfortunately uh, but you've got to investigate these things you've got to check them out um, for a long time I've been looking at pictures of that and now we've finally seen it 
So we've just got to get out of this uh, little uh, brook now, which isn't an easy task, is it? So there you go. We just had to satisfy our curiosity about the moss brook and what it did and why it did it and what was still there. Obviously the dream would have been to find the old leets and a water wheel, but unfortunately that wasn't to happen. We also learned about Logwood Mills that are now on the site where H. Marcel Guest is. And I'd like to thank them for allowing us into their site to get a, a view of that, uh, that weir because otherwise you can't see it. I think there's still some history on that site. Anyway, there you go, the Moss Brook, Colliers Road, and of course the River Irk. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time in the next video. Bye for now. Don't forget to use my code ZERO for 83% off Surfshark plus three months extra for free. I'll put the link to the uh, offer in the description to this video and I'll also pin it in the first comment. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video.